Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and the subject of this video is uh, flywheels. And uh, I've talked about flywheels before, but uh, making these little flywheels, and I've been making them out of hard lead, but I use them in my little uh, uh, steam engines, and there are videos on the steam engines, there are videos on me pouring and making these uh, uh, flywheels, uh, and much discussion about the molds that I use. But in this video, I want to talk about uh, some uh, plastic patterns. And uh, in the following video, video, I hope to cast some of these for you. Now, an aluminum flywheel such as this really has little value because we need some weight to flywheel so that we have inertia. And uh, this, that's why I have made them out of hard lead. I have... Brass ones are good. I have no ability to make cast iron ones. This uh, aluminum one someone uh, gave to me, or I forgot where I got it, but it, it, it just doesn't have the weight that is needed. And mainly what I do in my foundry is uh, aluminum, but I hope to uh, cast some of these out of zinc if I can. Uh, and if it's successful, that'll be shown in a video. If not, you won't see that. So... Let's get started here on these patterns that were made for me by Herb Blair by uh, the uh, uh, 3D printer method. A man by the name of Herb Blair out of Carrollton, Texas, who's a friend of mine and I have met him, made uh, three different flywheel patterns for me. They're, they're plastic, but they were produced on his 3D printer. Now, Herb has several videos so be sure and look at his videos and thank you very much Herb by the way take a look at his videos because in uh, one of his videos he's actually printing this particular uh, flywheel pattern for me so let me talk about these one at a time and uh, uh, hopefully here I'm going to make some actual uh, sand molds and then cast from these patterns this is the first one that Herb sent me several months ago, and it's got eight spokes, but I told him, Herb, this will not be usable because uh, several reasons. First of all, you've got tremendous undercut here, so that would not withdraw from the pattern. And uh, secondly, there's no radius here. That all could be filled, but there's no radius. The hub here is way too thick and massive and would cause a shrinkage problem. Also, I do not know if, how much uh, pattern draft or taper he has on here because we need taper. And on all of these, there's going to be a little bit of a problem because a 3D printer, of course, layers uh, the plastic as it, as it produces it. And I don't know if you can hear or not as my nail goes across that. So that'll have to be sanded and cleaned up. And that's true with all the, the surfaces here, or, or it will not pull out. So, uh, in view of those uh, criticisms, and I, I tried to be kind, I'm sorry, Herb, but I, I think you already know that this one can't be used. So, Herb uh, went the extra mile and made uh, a couple more here. And I believe he was printing these side by side two at a time and he used different kind of plastic here as you, as you can see and this is also an eight uh, eight spoker with a, a much smaller hub and quite a nice radius in there no, no radius there so that might have to be filled a little bit I'm not sure if it will pull or withdraw or not an amazing process I have never done it we call this rapid prototyping, or I used to, but now it's called 3D printing, and I think most of you know a lot more about that than I do. I, uh, you also have to be able to do CAD drawing in order to do this. Now I take back what I said on this, using my little die maker square, you can see that there is a taper there, pattern draft. Similarly, there is on the hub here as well, so that would draw other than the roughness of it. And there's pattern draft here and on the spokes. But the one I'm most interested in, of course, is the one with the curved spokes. And did I speak of this yet or not, that 
Uh, my only criticism on this one would be that the the actual rim on it is relatively narrow as opposed say to this one and the the major purpose of a flywheel is that we want mass on the rim not on the hub because that's where uh, where we get the the value of a flywheel and the inertia and all of that the larger the diameter and the heavier the, the rim for those of you that understand the physics of it so uh, by the time that this would get machined after the casting is made it might thin this out even more but still for the small engines uh, it may be inefficient but it's going to work and do we have draft there let me see yes plenty of it now these patterns need to be reworked before that uh, they, they can be used and primarily we need alignment pins well we're easily gonna or I'm gonna easily be able to make an alignment pin in the center there that, that will center it this way but then I need at least one more pin that will center it this way and that'll be easy enough to do and uh, finally some holes to put screws in to withdraw them and I'm not sure what these holes were I didn't put them in but maybe that was something to do with how he held these in the uh, 3d printer machine and they don't seem to align with one on one another so I cannot use them and the same thing on uh, this pattern so I'm gonna go ahead and do that some of it I may show and some I may not then it'll be ready to take out to my little foundry and see what I can do as far as uh, as making molds with them now I got a lot of other videos on foundry and my pattern making and all that be sure to look at those if your interests are along that line rather than machining and thanks for watching and by the way, the my flywheel size, uh, I like to make them in proportion to the size of the uh, engine that I'm going to build. And these little uh, lead ones are two and a half in diameter. The, my bigger lead ones, this has already been machined, is uh, about three and an eighth there. So it was about three and a quarter before it got machined. And the ones that Herb made here are an even four inches. This other aluminum one that somebody made is also, I'm going to call it a three inch, it's a little bit over. Whenever a new pattern is made, uh, there's usually a test period when you want to just try it and see if, uh, if it withdraws. And that's what I'm doing here. And I've taken uh, this pattern of herbs rammed up one half of a mold here just to play with and it did withdraw but I had to do quite a bit of tapping in uh, four directions and you can see that it did withdraw and it's not too bad and it would be usable but right here there was a little tear out and right here is is the worst part but still usable and right there now let's look at the other one now here's the wheel with the curved spokes again just a little tearing out and surprisingly enough it's it tore out where there is a, a tremendous amount of uh, well should I say yeah well, I don't know why but it, we got a little tear right there and right there and part of that might have been uh, my carelessness in withdrawing it because if you don't pull the pattern straight up it's going to tear and that's the one of the values of a match plate is that it allows you to pull it up but uh, my conclusion here is that these are both usable patterns without uh, doing any filling or anything else like that and so I'm going to take them back down the basement and put some the pins in there and uh, come back out and, and ram up a few I'm back in the basement and I'm making modifications to the pattern as needed and uh, 
By the way, you know, somebody said to me, quit banging things around. I hate that when you bang it. I guess I, I do this. I mean, I'm not saying I don't, but he said, you just throw things around. I can't stand the noise. Quit doing that. Or, you know, you set a hammer down, set it down gingerly like that. Don't just set a hammer down. So, all right, I got to be more careful. But remember, I'm doing 20 things at a time here when I'm making this video, so I, I just can't remember all that stuff. But Herb made these holes an indeterminate size, slightly under a quarter, so I went right over to the drill press and I drilled these center holes out, quarter inch, and then I took a quarter inch aluminum rod and it was a good, almost a press fit. I had to tap it in there. Now I'm going to take this over to the lathe, chuck it up, and I'm going to sand this lightly. Also, I like to put a little bit of a chamfer or a bevel on uh, the periphery here on the corner, I should say, both on the outside and right here, and that will aid this in the withdrawal. Remember that patterns, patterns should not really have any sharp corners. I'll also hit it with a file right here. Step over to the Atlas lathe with me, if you would. It's been a mighty long time since my good friend the Joker has made an appearance on the videos, and so he's going to watch me here, and I sure find sure he'll find something I'm doing wrong. But chucked up in this little chuck here, I'm taking a file, filing that corner, and similarly, I will break this corner. But I think I'm going to go get one of my Riffler files to do that. And then I'm going to use some uh, abrasive and sand this periphery here. And I'll do that off camera. I like working with the Joker because he doesn't talk back. All right, I'm back from the Atlas lathe now, and you can see that I smoothed out the outside surface as compared to the other one. And notice how I rounded this corner compared to this. Now I'm going to do that to this as well as the other pair and look at the corner right here. So that's going to make it easier to withdraw. These uh, surfaces right here where I'm rubbing my thumb are quite rough, almost like a corn cob. Uh, there's no decent way to sand that. I suppose a fellow could use some kind of filler, but it would be incredibly labor intensive and I, I really don't think it's necessary. I took a short piece of this aluminum quarter-inch rod and tapered the end of it on the lathe and then I drove it in flush. That'll plug that hole as well. And that is the, the alignment pin. And then I need to plug this hole so I prepared a short piece of that. Tap it in, trying not to make any noise like that. I'll do that to the other one off camera. Now I told you I need another pin of some kind so that uh, this is registered properly. That is not twisted one way or the other. So what I plan on doing here, this isn't very wide. I was going to take an eighth inch bit but I think maybe it'll have to be 330 seconds or, well, it could be quarter. The, the spokes are so thin, I don't think I'll do it on the spokes. I wanted to do it out on the rim and uh, drill a 330 seconds hole perhaps all the way through the first piece and about that far into the second. And then I'll use a piece of 330 second filler rod to make a pin similar, if not identical, to this. Be back in a minute. When I was in college, I had an art teacher that used to say, and this was an art class, of course, that the camera has liberated the artist, so he can do anything he wants. doesn't have to paint portraits of people that look like people. They can look like, uh, well, you know what I mean with modern art. Well, I think, why am I saying that? Because I'm wondering if the 3D printer has liberated the, uh, uh, the pattern maker. I suspect it's liberated many of them of their jobs. It's all done overseas probably anyway. This is 330 seconds brass. 
Well, I made a video, and it was my visit to Dearborn, Michigan, where I showed a 3D printer. This was at the auto show a couple of years ago. The 3D printer was uh, making an automobile body. And I've got some footage on that. And uh, then on Jay Leno's show, he, he showed somebody doing that, but I, I beat him to the punch on that one. But nobody watched my video, so the point is moot. All right, I will cut this off to length, and then that's my other alignment pin. And again, I'll do that on both uh, pairs of wheels. This one's ready to go. There's just one minor problem here that even uh, pressing them together like this, there's, there's a bit of a gap. And it's kind of hard to determine what it is, but I believe holding a straight edge on here, that there's just a little bit of warpage or something there, but I think I can deal with that. Now what I'm going to use to, to lift the patterns out, if I need to lift them out of the sand mold, is the, the holes that were already drilled and the drywall screw, because they really can grab and I can lift it out. And I, I venture a guess there isn't a single guy watching this that hasn't had a drywall screw in their tire at one time or another sometimes several of them in one tire. They're so sharp. Don't put them in your pocket either. So now, uh, let me do the other one and then we're ready to do some molding. Now that I'm spending more time with this eight-spoker, I'm finding there really is no pattern draft on there at all. And same thing up here. So it's going to be troublesome, and I'm not going to spend too much time with it. I, I mounted uh, this one in the lathe and, and cleaned it up a little bit. However, for some reason, this one, and I don't know why, just wobbles so that I can't hold it in the lathe without using another method. So again, being in a hurry, I'm not going to spend too much time, but I'm going to go ahead and, and put the mounting pins on here and sip and struggle with it when, uh, with the sand mold, but I may give up on it at some point because of the lack of a draft. Several things. First of all, I'm not sure what kind of plastic herb used here. I recognize the smell when I was sanding it, but I don't know what it is. And apparently he used two different kinds of plastic. And I think it starts with thread, some kind of plastic thread that he has to buy. It's rather expensive, too. Well, I got the center hole in, and I had a change of heart. I took both of these on the belt sander and sanded two degrees of uh, pattern draft on them. And now I'm ready to put that uh, other alignment pin in here. But there's just a little problem here with uh, the indexing, where if I line up this spoke here perfectly. Uh, the, the spokes on the opposite side aren't quite lined up. But that's just the way it's going to have to be. So I'll go ahead and use 3 16 uh, pin in the rim because this rim is thicker than the previous one. Finally done, and this one took quite a bit of time. I put a little brass alignment pin right there. I got some extra holes there. They won't hurt anything. And I did have to fill one hole here where I misdrilled. I just put some clay in there. It's not too critical. But examining this, there's a flaw right there on one of the spokes. Uh, that is a void. And I don't know what that's all about. Maybe I'll put a little clay in there. I should fill it with body putty, but I'm not in the mood. All right, I had quite enough fun for today. That's it for this video. Uh, join me tomorrow in the next part of this video, where I do the actual molding and hopefully casting. So long for now. Double cane.